All right, so fourth video, we've got our finished black and white cartoon jumble as a PNG on the desktop. We check it in preview. The gray is coming through. Looks great. It is high resolution, right? Because we pulled from only high resolution files. So if we go to tools and adjust size, not to change it, but just to see, mine is 11 by 14 inches by 500 pixels per inch. That means I can print it probably up to 16 by 20 inches and not lose any quality. Pretty nice. And remember, on these cartoon jumbles, we didn't draw a thing, right? But we made a unique image. We made our own expressive image by transforming other people's creative work. And we're going to read more about that in chapter two. How do we transform and make unique work even when we're using other people's photos and things? Okay, now that I have that, how do I uh, turn it in for the class so that we can critique it and get credit for it? Well, we go to Chrome and we go to Photo Bucket. And once we're logged into the course, we go to Digital Art 1. And we go to Exercises within Digital Art 1. <laughs> And we go down this, this nest, and we're going to go to the Cartoon Jumble Exercise 1. Click on that. Because the first thing is you don't just upload it anywhere. You need to upload it to the right place. And all these folders are cleared out for you right now. So Exercise 1, Cartoon Jumble. I'm in it. It says it up there. It has a click to upload. You can do it that way. Right? Or you can just drag and drop. Okay, it's uploading. While that's uploading, I'm going to save my color version. So I say save as. I don't want to overwrite my PSD, right? Not yet. I'm going to call this my cartoon jumble color. And I'm going to save it to the desktop. And I'm going to save it as a PNG. Hit save. Hit OK. I'm going to see it show up. It's right there. But it's not finished yet. PNGs take a little while. Then I'm going to check it by double clicking it, opening it in preview. The gray is coming through, looks good. I can go back to Photo Bucket and I can upload it again. Right. And now I have two that are uploading. And because you guys are uploading yours, once that gets in, I'll show you how I label it. No, you can do multiples. You can do multiples. All right. Now I want to show you, while I'm waiting for those, another way we could do color, right? Because what's nice about using layer styles is I can just turn off the effects or adjust the effects anytime I want without affecting my pixels, right? Like I could do a red version. But what if I wanted to do a Google image search for colors I liked, kind of like we did for the background of our class goals? So let me go do a Google image search. And I'm going to look for uh, Donald Duck comics. I just thought of something random. Uh, beautiful. And I'm going to look for tools, a size that's larger than, this time, 8 megapixels. because so I needed to cover the entire thing. And I, I want just kind of an old comics page. Ah, very nice. Kind of an old vintage comic um, double page spread here, a splash page. View image, huge resolution, right? It shows all the printing dots. We're going to learn about all those things. <laughs> Got some interesting things going on. I'm going to save it to the desktop. Okay, now I'm going to go back. And I am going to drag this new reference on top of my, my top layer. And I am going to distort it, warp it, push and pull it to kind of roll it out as dough so it covers up my cartoon jumble, right? 
Think of this as like using a sheet of contact paper or wrapping paper, and we're just spreading it out on top of our cutout. Okay, now I'm going to turn this off. This is optional for you guys, but this is an important skill I wanted to introduce in a video early on. I'm going to go to my layer with my cartoon jumble, which remember we, we took out all the white pixels. So now I'm going to use the magic wand with contiguous turned off at 32, just like we did for the white. But this time I'm going to se select empty space. And it will select all the empty space. Now I'm going to go to select, select inverse. Now it's all the stuff that's not empty space. Now, this is the big new thing, which is really cool. I'm going to move that selection to this layer. Because your selections can move. They're not layer dependent. So I basically have made a perfect kind of cutout, a stencil of my cartoon jumble that I will now duplicate out of this wrapping paper. Command J, turn off the background. And there's my cartoon jumble out of that. The problem is that's pretty recognizable, right? Would you agree? So how do we make it not recognizable and more my work, right? My coloring. We multiply and we uh, use multiple colors. So now instead of Donald Duck comics, let me just look for a cool pattern. Let's look for a... Uh, Let's see, Cosmic Doctor Strange uh, Flash Page. Keep old comics. See, this is why the Marvel movies are making image searches difficult. I want classic and old. And it's still limiting it to larger than, than 8 megapixels. I want something without words. Here we go, this will work. Okay, I'm going to take this part. This is old Jack Kirby stuff. Drag and drop it. I could view the image. I can check. Excellent. Good resolution. All right, now I'm going to drag that on top and just show you these steps again. Going to stretch it, roll it out so I don't have any of those words overlapping my image. Man, I love these, these old comics and their inking. And the very limited color, like the 24 colors they were able to mix, <laughs> or 26, they did amazing things. All right, now let's go through those steps again. I go back to my original cartoon jumble. I select the empty space with the magic wand with contiguous turned off. I select the inverse, so now it's everything that is there. And I move that selection up to my new color. And I command J to duplicate it onto its own layer. So now I have that version and this version. So how do I blend them? I can play with opacity. Or I could erase out, right? So I'm going to play with opacity a little bit. That's pretty cool. I'll play with opacity of the other one too. And it will show my, my coloring effects underneath. I can turn the red on or off. <laughs> um, I'm going to turn this opacity on, I would say about 50%, and actually use my eraser with a soft edge. Because remember, you're allowed to erase and erase out any words. Right, and kind of blend those out, and then take that opacity back down. Maybe take this opacity up a little bit, past 50%. And again, we're not going for perfection, but that's pretty cool. Okay, then as a final step, <laughs> just to, to summarize all these things we've talked about, I want to merge all of these colors that I've played with into one layer. So what do I do? I have all my layers turned on that I want, so not the background. I hold down Option. I'm on the topmost layer. I go to Layer, Merge Visible, 
and it will turn off all the layers underneath. And there it is. Why is that nice? Well, now I can do layer styles to this and play with it. Add a gradation on top, add a color overlay. Um, but I'm going to show you what are called image adjustments because a lot of you are using what are called layer adjustments, which are great, but we're not going to use in this class because they're, they, they're not as predictable as what are called direct adjustments. So instead of going to layer and doing new adjustment layers like some of you are used to, to alter the image, which is how you mostly do photo editing, we're going to go to image and adjustments and affect the pixels directly. And the first thing I'm going to do is play with the color by going to hue saturation. And I'm going to slide that saturation up because they're old comics, they have cool colors. I'm going to mess with the color spectrum of it a little bit. So it's a little bit more pleasing to me. I can play with the overall lightness or darkness. I might darken it a tiny bit, saturate it a little bit more. Hit OK. And then to see if I liked what I did there with the direct adjustment, because I changed the pixels, I can just hit Command Z. And all I did was kind of intensify the saturation. Let's do another direct adjustment. Image adjustment levels is one I love. I can make the brights brighter. I can make the darks darker. I can shift the midtones either lighter or darker until I'm happy with it. That's pretty dramatic, right? And it will work on multiple backgrounds. Cool. What's next? Uh, I could go to image, direct adjustments, and I can play with um, what I call the color, or what it calls the color balance. This is actually my favorite adjustment tool, but it's way more subtle. So when you're close to what you want, then you can play with the midtones, the highlights, or the shadows, and just push it a little bit. This feels like it's a little too warm overall, like it's in, in, the, in a room lit by fluorescent yellow lights. So if I want to take that yellow out, I move the midtones to the blue. I take the highlights and I can move them a little bit towards the cyan. So it'll look a little bit more full spectrum. If I think it looks a little too magenta overall, I can push it away from that. If it looks too green overall, I can push it away from that. Right? I try to keep pretty close to the middle. But this is a much more refined tool than hue saturation. And this is what's called color temperature modification. And we'll be using this a lot when we're compositing landscapes together to make the landscapes match. Because one might have been taken you know, in the desert under an orange sky, and one might have been taken in the morning on a coastline, and it's a blue you know, cyan sky. But we can make them match. All right, I like that. Beautiful. And I'm using my history. I can say, have I improved it at every step? Yes. I like it. If you want to be lazy about it, which is sometimes necessary, go to image adjustments, skip the adjustments, just go underneath to auto tone or auto contrast or auto color, and it will optimize it for you. All right. And that's always a good option I'll look at at the end to see if I like what the, it automatically did versus what I did. I do kind of like how it lightens up some of the greens and shows more of the subtlety. All right, now I'm ready. File, save as cartoon jumble. I'm going to call this texture, right? Because it's more than just filling in with a flat color. Now we're bringing in external color and texture from somewhere else to the desktop as a PNG. <coughs> save. And while that's saving, I'm going to go back to photo bucket. And my work is there. Here's my black and white. I'm going to click on it. And if it's taking forever, <laughs> I might right click on it and open my image in a new tab. To hopefully jumpstart it a little bit. And then I'll show you how I title it. And while I'm doing that, I can upload my next one. Okay, so here it is. So when you click on yours, you'll see it says click to add title. This is what you need to do to title your work this semester. This is important. You need to start capital S, P, and then 1-8 for spring 2018. Then the name that you have on your ID card, right? 